everyone here uh, for joining us. I'm very excited to be with this very amazing set of panelists from different companies, from diverse backgrounds and industries to share with us the knowledge from 2019, right? So user acquisition channels in 2019, what didn't, what worked, what didn't, and we have about 35 minutes, 30 minutes to uh, discuss such a big topic, so I would like to get started. So I wanted to introduce myself. First of all, my name is Christine. Uh, I currently work as the UA and ASO manager at Adidas Rentastic. Um, we recently rebranded as well, just like Skyscanner, uh, two months ago, so we're actually now called Adidas Running. Um, I've been in the industry for six years now, but every day I feel like I still learn something, because that's just our industry, right? It keeps changing, stuff keeps shifting. So let's take 2019 alone with Google finally releasing ad groups. I don't know who's excited about it, I, I am. Um, Facebook emphasizing the importance of creatives with CBO, the rise of TikTok, and really a lot of topics we have to discuss. So without further ado, I would like um, I would like to introduce the, uh, our panel here. So guys, uh, it's a bit weird that I'm standing up and you guys are sort of yeah. sitting down, first of all. But I'm yeah. small, so we kind of got the, <laughs> you know, we're like kind of the same height. But no, um, I want you all to introduce yourself like briefly. And as a warm-up question, as a warm-up game, does everyone know here what KFM means? I feel so Gen Z right now, looking at people's faces. Okay, KFM is a is a college game. If you ever went to an American college, it's called Kill Fuck Mary. So I wanted to put it in a context like this. Um, introduce yourselves, please, and if think about 2019, all of the user acquisition channels you managed, you gave, gave up on, or whatever else, and let the audience know what would you kill in 2020. What would you fuck? So let's say experiment on uh, in 2020. And marry, because you want to keep it and grow it as a sustainable channel. So please feel free. I should start. <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm Ben. I'm uh, the, the <clears throat> proud father of two boys and uh, one uh, lucky husband of one woman. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that brings me. By, uh, I'm monogamous in, in real life, but when it comes to kill, fuck, marry, I think I'm going to. Uh, we are as AppsFly are married to all our wonderful partners, so this question is quite easy, and I'm going to escape it that way. Um, yeah, a, a bit about myself, so. Um, in, I've, I live in Berlin uh, ever since joining Fiber back in 2011, where I um, initially was part of the uh, mobile task force and then later led the client services team uh, in EMEA. Um, after uh, studying in Manchester, I, since 2016, I was uh, fortunate enough to be chosen as uh, the first AppSplyer employees in Berlin, and I opened the office here. Um, and now my job, and has ever since been, is to build a team uh, that enables mobile marketers to make data-driven decisions um, here in the Central European region. And I'm very happy to be here. Thanks. So. Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Marichka, and I lead paid search and display at Blinkist the key insights from nonfiction in one app that you can listen to or read in 15 minutes. Um, and as to the game, uh, I think it's a bit dangerous to say one would kill a channel because you first decide that you're done with it and then something new comes up, they change the algorithm and you're back to testing it again. And it happened to us a couple of times with different channels. I think for the time being, for 2020, I would definitely pause maybe some smaller channels, and we have paused some smaller paid social and native channels that just didn't pay off in the volume um, compared to the effort that we've put into it. And I think as uh, Blinkist is sort of app and also web acquisition, uh, me personally, I'm pausing for a while YouTube display on web, just because, um, not because they are bad and I'm not telling you to do it, but uh, because we figured out our attribution is sort of limited and we cannot like give them a fair chance right now. So we need to figure out some stuff before we move on to giving them a fair chance. Um, 
yeah, experiment probably with the smaller channels that have a lot of prospects. Like, for instance, we've been running Quora for a while, but it's always been super small. But it seems like it's getting more and more um, improvements on the platform side, and also it's getting more interesting for more and more players. So it's definitely something where we reevaluate our resources and would like to experiment more with those and definitely grow sustainably all the players that we unfortunately cannot even um, consider getting rid of, like the big ones, um, like Google, Facebook, paid content. I know you all know we're good at it. Um, Hi, Sandra. Um, she talks later, and she has loads of cool stuff to tell. Uh, so yeah, those, I think. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Is everyone hearing me here? But this is the first time this thing in my ear. Um, <laughs> hi, my name is Omri. Um, actually, I've been in the industry um, for more than 15 years. I got balls from the industry. Um, I co-founded a company called Moblin in uh, 2005 with uh, two more partners way before the iPhone. I mean, we've been in the industry, we've seen all the industry for 15 years already. Um, two years ago, we merged the company with Zoomed, Moblin. Um, and three months ago, we took the company being public in the Canadian Stock Exchange. Um, I think that um, on our side, since I've been in the industry so long, that's the reason we actually built the platform that we built, that what I would kill is wasting time. I think the marketers today are wasting so much time in testing and testing and going and logging, registering to a new system and a new platform, a new system, a new platform. That's why we built our platform, just connected to more than 600 platforms um, in order to give you the ability to start wasting your time on what the important stuff are, is um, managing the campaign and not testing and testing and testing. Um, our platform actually gives you the ability, it automates all your testing if you have a new channel you want to test, so we just can integrate it to our platform. Um, I would, uh, what I see from our customers, the various customers, um, if it's e-commerce, if it's gaming, a lot of them are uh, starting, I wouldn't say kill, but hurt social channels, Facebook mainly, uh, Google also, not Google, at YouTube I would say a bit, but it's more Facebook, mainly because it's hard to understand what's going on there. Um, people are starting to understand maybe all um, the advantages that Facebook or other companies are trying to take themselves, maybe those users are coming from other places. I'm not talking fraud uh, issues, that's a huge issue, but regarding attribution, it's hard to measure. Um, so I would say Facebook uh, mainly, and what new channels is, you know, everyone's talking about TikTok, Quora, Reddit, programmatic, uh, um, all these channels. Again, as I see my point of view as a product platform, a product company, we just connect. If we see a new hot topic, a new hot channel, a new hot media source, just connect it to our platform, then we see how good it is. Um, so that's on our side, again, as a service provider, as a product that manages all the user acquisition. Yeah. No, I mean, like, that's how our industry currently is. We have to adapt to the changes, because otherwise, how do you understand if this is a good channel? How do you understand if you're wasting your time, as you said? When I say, well, what I say, just one more thing, when I say wasting my time, our, our, our when you are a user acquisition manager and you need to manage, you need to find those new channels all the time, what works, what's better, what's not. So what do you do? You go and you hear about a new channel, you go and you register, you go and you test it, you manage that campaign in that channel. Our system just brings everything to one screen. That's why I'm saying you keep you're less wasting time. Right. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Paulina, and I'm leading performance marketing team um, at 8Fit, fitness nutrition app, uh, since one month now. Before I was leading the digital team uh, at Bubble, 17 people team. So the first question is very easy to me because coming from the company of 700 people to start out with 50, <laughs> I won't kill any channel we are currently using, obviously, because it has not so many. And um, definitely at Bubble, we were using around 100 digital uh, suppliers every month, while today it's uh, way less. So I can totally echo you on uh, wasting the time on uh, managing supplies through different platforms. So yeah, uh, which channel would I like to put a um, test on? Definitely the marketing. Uh, coming from a subscription business, auto renewal, obviously, running on app, mobile web, and web, uh, with uh, all attribution challenges coming into it, uh, obviously you need to find like this first spot being installed or sign up, then you have maybe free trial, 
Then you have uh, the paying subscriber. So where do you put the marketing on? Keeping in mind, CRM is a huge machine creating a revenue, so you don't want to actually mess up with the offers. If you are not, if your infrastructure is not very flexible, if you cannot show the user a personalized offer or personalized uh, landing page, you're actually showing over and over again all the same stuff. So you cannot expect actually the user uh, to convert. So this one we really need to fix. And yeah, about keeping, definitely keep all big channels, UCs, uh, ASA, all of those. Okay, thank you. Hey, um, I'm Sebastian. Uh, I work at, I'm the VP marketing at GetSafe. Uh, we are a multi-line insurance uh, here in Germany, currently expanding in Europe. Um, we basically, uh, we're not a broker, we basically insure whatever you want to insure. Uh, it all happens in the app. Uh, so we're a little bit different business than most here. Uh, so I think I bring a little bit an edge here. Uh, for channels, um, or quickly about me, I've been running marketing for, for probably one and a half decades now for some time. Uh, Built a bunch of startups in the US, uh, came back three years ago to good old Germany. Um, so the way we approach things is um, uh, we're, comp we're in an industry where traditionally app marketing doesn't happen and it's still not happening. Uh, big insurers, they just build an app to uh, have their users log in and maybe file a claim. Um, so for us, it's a, everything is pretty new. Um, so, so one part I agree, we, we try to find channels that can scale. Um, I think that's, uh, for us as a startup with like 70 people, we don't have time to uh, deal with all this stuff. Uh, every single partner comes up to us. Um, the other part is like fraud, and um, that's something we're super close watching. Um, we like we have to we can get people in but we have to watch that they actually do something in our app um, so i would kill those channels where you can see hey get a spanish speaking user from uh, the united states uh, you know that could be possible but <laughs> <laughs> actually uh, from uh, from a country where the language is just not spoken on many of them then uh, when it's obvious fraud then uh, then we'll shut them down um, Okay, thanks for the, the answers to your warm-up questions, but now we know our panels a little bit better, so I would like to specifically deep dive into what your current experiences are, and maybe you can share some insights. Um, yeah, but for, for example, Ben, um, as Apps Flyer, you guys get a bird's eye view of what's ha happening in the industry. So um, I'd like to ask, like, where do you think things are headed, um, and what were the trends that stood out for you that you've seen in 2019? Yeah. Um, so from from a UA uh, channel perspective, I definitely something that's also been mentioned before, uh, TikTok uh, stood out um, as as one of the growth channels. Um, Just like quickly, raise of hands. Who has tried TikTok as a UA channel this year? Whoa, just four <laughs> brave souls. I also haven't tried it, but I really like to try it, but okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's one to watch, um, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, and uh, then we have, uh, when, when, I, when I think about app genres, and I see Yuri right now, um, hyper-casual hyper, uh, hyper games has just been something that has continued to grow. It's not something that started in 2019, but just right. the growth has just been phenomenal um, and I mean what what that shows is that this market is still super dynamic and and, and evolving and and so I, I think for all of us that means it's it won't get boring and we do need to um, keep on the lookout and experimenting and, and seeing what's going on because there's huge growth opportunities around the corner uh, for all of us no uh, I completely completely agree um, I, as I, I mentioned, uh, as the other panelists have also mentioned, there are a lot of channels that are just simply growing out of nowhere. I mean, I didn't know TikTok before, and then, I don't know, a, lot, a week ago, I posted a video, and I was like, okay, crap, I really am so hooked on this thing. And, you know, it's the Gen Z, so millennials and Gen Z are going to be the bulk of purchasing power in the years to come. You have to understand where they are and how they actually get engaged. So obviously, we definitely have to, um, to, to look into that. But um, 
Marichka, you actually mentioned a little bit about the duopoly, so Facebook and Google. They have been the industry, let's say, well, duopoly, as I said, for <laughs> yeah. quite a while now. Um, what I'd like to understand is from your experience in, um, in, in, in Blinkist, like, um, what was your what was your view on these channels? Like, do you is there like how did your team actually um, looked into the changes that were happening with these two channels in 2019? Because as I said, uh, fa I mean, Facebook had CBO, Google finally released ad groups. Any thoughts on that matter? Uh, yeah. So um, I mean, it of course it was. Um, it uh, took us some, some time and energy to adjust to all of this. Uh, I personally come from web and paid search, so it's very difficult for me to uh, release the control. Yeah. Um, so I had to like personally deal with that as well. And we were the first ones for whom it was like so drastic with the UACs. Uh, of course, now it's, it's, it's good to see how on Google we sort of like got all the limitations first, and now we are got a, kind of getting more and more leverage. Yeah. Um, but it's still quite frustrating, right. and um, especially like even testing with ad groups um, on of different yeah. asset concepts yeah. is all. Yeah. It's like n never such a sure thing as it was before. Yeah. I think with uh, both of the channels, what we've noticed in ourselves in the way our perspective changed um, instead of concentrating on in-house bidding automation or mm -hmm. third-party tools we are concentrating on sending more events into both platforms uh, in order to make educated decisions we try to think more about what is the value of those like micro actions within the event, within our apps so that we can maybe define some like more sweet spots and better like under, like figure out for ourselves what uh, what actions are the more valuable for us in the long run mm -hmm. and so uh, that is something that i think it's good to know about your customer in the uh, anyway yeah. so it's good that we can um, use that information to leverage the performance however as the the company that is trying to acquire users both on web and app it's right. very difficult because we see that uh, in terms of um, um, basically any platform does not get a full view of the right. events if we use um, like third-party tracking and we have to do, like in involve a lot of BI and data engineering resources in order to uh, be able to send those events directly to the platforms and only the big players do it so it doesn't pay off and it doesn't help with the small ones so you still have to like then go in and manually change things in uh, Quora or use a third party um, tool for Apple search ads and that is slightly frustrating yeah. as well that, that, that's um, that's really Tracking in general and campaign management is a bulk of work if you haven't automated a lot of things. Um, but yeah, that's really interesting to hear because actually in Rentastic we don't have a lot of web campaigns, so I actually don't understand these problems for now, but that's a, an interesting perspective, I, I, I would have to say. Um, Polina, from Babel and mm -hmm. 8Fit, I guess you also have been dealing a lot with the duopoly and also maybe emerging channels. Would you have anything to add about like how you how you and your teams dealt with the changes that happened in these two big channels and maybe were there any channels that were in 2019 getting there to be the next well these are tripoli no i don't know if there's a word for a three uh, a monopoly of three company monopoly I um at Babel, they definitely had a lot of successes with the uscs um in the beginning uh, it was exactly this okay Giving up the control, it was a huge uh, problem. And in the beginning, product was very shaky. And um, so you could not really trust the algorithm. And we had uh, a lot of conversations with our Google people, also with their developers from Mountain View. Mm -hmm. And what we were doing, we put in the app amount of micro conversions, like, OK, start the lesson, finish the lesson, and all of those, to uh, push them back to the system for our third party in-app tracking mm -hmm. solution. And that helped. So it took us time, obviously, and obviously you also need to have a certain marketing budget behind sure. to get the certain volume. Um, but that definitely made our UCs a huge success for uh, 2019. 
and a very big machine delivering revenue for the company. Um, generally speaking, I can say that per definition there is no like bad or good channel. The question is what would you like to achieve with this? Yeah. Uh, so what is the company direction? Are we growing? Are we, need, uh, are we need to be efficient? Are we optimizing on the installs? What my both companies are not doing? Uh, for us, it's about the paying customer, maybe even after refund. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, your strategy is totally different then. Uh, but also, you need to grow. Uh, so here, I think the tech integration, the attribution, all these uh, challenges between web, mobile web, and in-app, how we bring this all together mm -hmm. and make it all grow, uh, this is like the biggest questions. But obviously, if you take YouTube, and then expect YouTube ad to convert in the same day in the paying subscriber where they're like highest amount of revenue possible and ROI positive, this is just not gonna happen. You need to be conscious about which channel do you use for what. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree too because some companies have very different goals, like some focus on just the monthly active user, some has their, has their North Star metric as the retained user, but how do you get there and what channels are leading you there? Because sometimes some channels just serve a different purpose. So let's say maybe Facebook is better in getting us retained users. Others may be better in getting us, I don't know, an optimized event for just getting them to the purchases um, or add to purchase cards. So I, I completely agree with you. Um, I'm very interested though with, um, because you mentioned it uh, a while ago, Sebastian, um, you come from an industry that is not actually mobile kind of first. So how do you deal with this, let's say, mobile UA um, channels and problems in, in your kind of um, line of work? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, insurance is not the sexiest industry, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like selling taxes, I always call okay. it internally. Try to sell taxes in an app. Uh, good, good fun. Um, no, for us, it's a lot of it's a lot about like tracking attribution. Um, we have a little bit of different model, right? We're not a broker, so we, we do end-to-end. -end. You come in as a client, we try to upsell you, you file your claim there. So for us, tracking attribution is like core, right? So our BI team needs to be spot on, or we cannot go into new channels. Like we cannot turn TikTok on or any Twitch or whatever, Reddit, if this is not, uh, uh, if it's not set right. And the, the tricky part about insurance, I don't want to talk about insurance too often, but the, the ROI comes after nine years for some products. So uh, it's not like you can uh, say, hey, I'm buying a bunch of TikTok users and I'm going to convert them ne in the next six months. It's going to take you maybe nine years to figure out if they stick with you. Um, so that, that's the biggest challenge for us, but also the biggest opportunity because nobody in the industry is doing it and nobody has, a, has multiple insurances. So. For us, this is a challenge, opportunity, and um, uh, that's why we're super open to new channels. We test them on uh, on different products. Uh, we also, uh, depending on your li your life situation, that's how you insure yourself, right? You get a dog, you have to insure the dog, or you get married. Uh, so we have to be, we have to see this holistic, and uh, that's why we approach it right now. But the, the truth is also, we're super early in. Uh, so every new channel we test and then uh, we have to evaluate and there's a lot of gut feel still but that's how we have to approach it because it hasn't been done before. We're not, we're not in the gaming industry, not in the casino industry. So um, that's, that's how we look at it. How, how do you actually, because um, you mentioned that the return is actually years from now. I, I can't imagine it because like for, for our app for example, well, it's easy for me because I can say, okay, D7, if they're not converting or whatever, they, they probably won't be. But in, in your industry, it's quiet. Um, it requires a lot of predictive modeling, I would say. Is there any tips or tricks you could like share to the audience, like how your team does it? Because I think this would be relevant for a lot of companies there who can't just simply put a value in, let's say, not even in the first 30 days of a user's lifetime. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about in-app tracking, right? Like, uh, if, we see, if, there, if we see this channel drives dormant users or drives users that file a claim within two weeks or eight weeks, we know, okay, this is maybe, uh, it's not the best channel. We're not at the point where we can predict, okay, this Google campaign is going to drive us the people who never file a claim and will stick around for 20 years. But uh, we try to look for these uh, tidbits within the app and, 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 and often we, we see little things where they get interested in another product, they, they click on it, they get informed, and uh, 
then uh, our CM team uh, is going after them, right? Uh, we're also building like in in um, in app products like a uh, mobile CRM products where we customize them customize them by campaign. So um, and that's it's complicated, but that's our shot at giving the best recommendation to the user while not yeah. overselling them, right? Yeah, no, that, that's that's pretty cool. So what you're saying is that you kind of find these proxy events to an important event in the future because I mean, for example, the purchase event is not the only event that you should mm -hmm. optimize on because maybe, maybe there are these events that users trigger as you as you were mentioning, and if they do that, there's a good chance that they will actually be a retained user, also will reach the certain ROI or lifetime value that you are expecting from them. Okay, mm -hmm. that's that's really Absolutely. helpful to understand. Mm -hmm. um, Omri, I didn't mean to skip on you, okay. <laughs> but actually I was trying to save this question about metrics for you, because yeah. um, actually you were talking a lot about campaign management. So give us some light on how, what are your tips to, to actually manage campaigns for, for campaign managers here, uh, and what metrics would, would they actually should look at, because you're mentioning, as you said, there's a lot of bottlenecks that can happen when you're launching campaigns, when you're thinking about channels. So would be love to hear that from you. Okay. so. Um First, I think, um, first tip is companies today, advertiser companies, um, test events in all kinds of various systems. If it's download tracking, if it's in-app tracking, if it's attribution, but a lot of times it's download tracking, of course, but a lot of analytics systems inside. A lot of problems what we see, as simple as it gets, naming. They give the events different names. Now, go find out what's here, purchase, and then this was called add to basket or whatever. So naming has to be the same naming. It's, 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 it sounds very simple, but if you would know how many times customers don't know to measure because of the wrong naming, that's one. Um, two, a lot of times, if you're measuring various systems, you need to be able to, to, to target to what's available in each system. And you cannot measure five things in this system, and then you want to you know, check them in other systems, um, but they don't support it. So you, tr you need to try and find the most common, low-level, uh, uh, measurable uh, uh, events, or, or what do you want to call it, but same mythology in all the systems you want to measure. That's the second. Um, and the third, you need to know, not everything is really measurable. You will never know 100% um, in everything. If it's measuring, if it's uh, uh, in fraud, um, fraud is hurting the industry. It's also something, of course, um, and you need to, to understand it. I mean, it's part of the industry a lot of times. Um, if you have good partners, so of course, they'll deduct you, but fraud is part of the industry. So I think um, as marketers, um, we need to understand that not everything is great, not everything is 100%. We don't always see anything, everything. We don't always know any, uh, everything. Um, and the moment you understand it, um, and the moment you're willing to try new channels and, and understand that, hey, I'll put here, not 10 million, but I'll put here, <laughs> if it's 5,000 even, or 10,000, it's okay. If, I'll know that it doesn't work, it's okay. That's also a V, that I'll know that something doesn't work, then I'll move on, I won't struggle if it does or doesn't. So I think also trying uh, uh, new channels and different channels, not what everyone's going to. I mean, TikTok as an example is a great example. Everyone's going there and I, I think everyone should. It's very interesting to know what's going on there, but I don't think there's, everyone really knows what works there and what doesn't, because um, it's so new and, and the buzz is huge. So if I summarize it, it's try to have the most common uh, mythology and all the systems you work. Don't be afraid to try new things, new channels, new sources. Understand that nothing in life <laughs> is 100% good. Everything is, I mean, be able to accept uh, uh, things that you won't know and you won't be able to measure. And that's it. Thanks for that. I think that's actually a perfect, let's say, end note to 2019 because I want to spend the rest of the time for, well, first of all, 2020, and of course, the floor for any questions. But yeah, so I will actually just give one final question to everyone here. Um, 2020, what are you most excited about for user acquisition? I'm gonna just like throw in some buzzwords here. I was like looking, 2020, UA, Google. Um, I saw 5G. Um, a lot of uh, app marketers are very excited about it if anyone uh, hasn't heard about it. But yeah, it well provides for a better and faster uh, connection a lot of possibilities and a lot of work on your app that you have to actually go through with that technology. Um, there's also AR, VR. I don't know if it's relevant for your industries, but like for example, for health and fitness, I just like so excited of the ads <laughs> I could think about there. But no, like, um, yeah, so these are some of the things that, well, 
I've been hearing a lot, and also AI. Uh, I, I was joking with someone here that, okay, let's count the times we hear in this conference that in 2018, data surpassed oil as the most valuable asset in the world. So it's like, okay, that's first. I, I, I've been in this room like since nine, so let's see <laughs> how many times you, you, we hear that. But yeah, with AI, with data, there's a lot of things, a lot of concepts that probably aren't even reachable for us yet. So I'd like to hear your opinion on any of those topics, or if there's something that I'm missing, please shoot it out. Um, let's start with Sebastian this time, so it's great. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Uh, no, uh, no. I, I'm personally, and you know, I don't think the council, the company, I'm super excited for 5G. I think uh, in general, uh, in the insurance space, it will change everything completely because it, you're not talking about being reactive but proactive. So uh, why don't I have like an IoT device in my basement and if it floods, it sends me a message, right? I think there's a lot of this stuff and I, I don't know exactly where this is going to be heading to, but I, I'm super excited about this stuff. The, the AI stuff, I think we're super early in. You see that in Gmail sometimes and Google Drive when they, when they know a lot of stuff about you. But the reality is who can actually, maybe here a few people can, but who can actually find the engineers to actually do it? So I think that's going to take a little bit longer. Obviously, super exciting. Um, but so I'm putting my bet on 5G for me. <laughs> um, I will do it differently. Uh, I won't use any kind of a buzzword for machine learning, all of this. For me, what I'm excited about is uh, marketing moving together with product. Because I think we also saw a lot of ad inflation this year. And in the end, it's not only about buying a new user all over again, but actually bring this user in the product, understand who are my active and paying user, what are they doing in our apps, uh, which features do they use, how we can build more of those features, how can we understand the user better, find similar user again, and how can we abandon the features which users are not using, and make them succeed, make them reach the goals, and move the needle from the like acquiring tons of new users, more into direction keeping them, making them achieving their goals, staying in the product, and being successful. This is for me the most important part. Um, so I'm close to you. Um, I think first, what's getting me excited is that we will be able, all of us, to be smarter um, because the oil, the data, and whatever. <laughs> but everything. I mean. The market's going there. We know more. We'll, we're able to collect more uh, and analyze more. So first, I'm exciting, um, excited that we, we'll all be smarter, probably. And also, it's going to sound weird, but being better. I think all the privacy rules that are going on, I'm really happy about them. Um, I think the privacy issues have been a uh, big problem. The issue, I think, most of the world doesn't even have a clue what's going on regarding privacy. So I'm really happy what's going on with California. It's weird that I'm saying it. Um, but I think that's something that will make our world better, also. So I think my opinion will be kind of supporting you guys as well. Um, so first of all, I I'm really excited to see where with like the spur from uh, value optimization or ROAS optimization, uh, where it takes us further and also what we learn about our customers just because now we have to. Um, and that way get smarter, get more sophisticated, get more personalized uh, if possible. And um, I think personally, I'm also uh, curious to see how all the interactive content develops with all the like shoppable ads we see now. Probably it's not so relevant for us as a business, but I'm definitely excited to see how, how that progresses. And it's pretty impressive. Um, so, I agree with most of what's been said, um, but I'm, I, I think as, as uh, the, the different UA channels are getting more and more competitive, um, what, what we're starting to see is uh, more emphasis on um, owned uh, channels. So, when it, when it comes to user acquisition, to use... Um, ESPs or email um, providers, smart banners on, on mobile web, um, using own social channels. Um, and I think there will be an emphasis, I mean, 
uh, integrating app links into Instagram stories, uh, just an example on the swipe up. Um, this is something that I think will will become uh, a focus for, for a lot of uh, people in, in 2020. I think time is up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there was like a small buzz and like, okay. But thanks everyone for, Thank for all the knowledge that you've shared, for all the time that you also give to the audience here. If there are any questions, I mean, you guys know them, you know their faces, try to find them outside. I'll try to find them too. So, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for, your all, uh, for everyone's attention and yeah, have a nice conference. <laughs>